No, it's just it's my computer's locked. Won't open. Just a check it here. Yeah, I'll just send it to you. Yeah, you can do that to your computer. It's wireless, right? Yeah. I don't know the password though. Or any of that shit. Like yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the hot wire one? The cable.
to save anything. Then when you read What's good? Hotel, what up, fam? What's good, pimp? Pim? Hotel. Shut up, fam. Man, you know. Living high. We got, uh, we got, the. Uh, <laughs> she don't like me calling her baby moms, but you know, it's so easy to say. 
the mother, mother of the children. 420, everybody better be blowing down. DJ, what up, man? Fam, what's good, fam? Chilling? When you come to Denver, man. ASAP Rocky. I'll be out there. I'm come coming. On, Wait, no, I'm, going, I'm going back down to DC and I'm depositing, baby. Be come out. On. I'm yeah. coming. Deposit? Of course. <laughs> Bro, Denver, Denver, man, bro, I, man, I know Denver. What, what Denver looking like, bro? Come on, man. It's sunny today. It's beautiful. When you coming, man? Denver Nugget. That's how it's looking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on, Matthew? What's up, man? What's going on? Chilling, chilling, fam. Let me get five, ten. Less, man. Ten minutes. We're going like five, ten minutes. Love, man. Come in. Love you guys. Oh, PJ. Too, What's good, Prez? Chilling, man. How you living, fam? Bro, I'm you right. that, man? Hanging out, hanging in there. That's all. That's all yeah. I can do. Yeah. Staying out of prison. <laughs> what book you want to go over next week, Prez? things going with uh, Santos? Um, when I go over in Australia, I'll be hanging out with him. Nice. Yep, yep. So I'm excited about that. I really want to talk and sit on with Marty. I've reached Marty. out to him. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, brother. You're killing me with that. <laughs> Why? You don't like him? Dude, I love Marty. Ah, there you go. I fucked with him heavy. Have you, have you gotten into uh, the series Balls Out Physics yet? Uh-uh. Dude, check it out. If you like Marty, you love Balls Out Physics. No, nah, it's a couple years old. It's a couple years old. I might old, have seen like it. it. All right, let me check it. I'll check it. Oh, I'm all right. <laughs> Hey, Balls out physics, a book? Nah, this uh, he's an engineer, um, and he's he's tried to prove curve theory, and he can't. Oh. Curve theory. Are we starting exactly at eleven? Sent you the link. Probably hasn't gotten it yet. So you think the, the earth is flat or is it round? <laughs> Let's just say I'm, I follow Santos Bonacci's belief. I I didn't, I, I'm still into like the, uh, like the, uh, the astronomy so side. You're both side. wrong. You're both wrong. It's curved. It's curved. It's concave. That, yeah, that makes sense though. Yeah, I, I haven't heard his opinion on that, though. That's what I love about Santos is I got to, I got to actually watch his progression. You got to kill your mic. Oh. Or somebody else has a mic going or something. It's echoing. Um, I actually watched his progression going, yeah. up, going from believing in ball earth to believing in flat earth. Hmm. And it, it was a long time. It almost drove him crazy. People talk a lot of shit about him for a lot of years. Probably. It sort of, uh, what's his name? I don't know if you uh, seen like Kyrie Irving say something about that. He started mm -hmm. bashing that man. Yeah. Crazy. All because all of an opinion, bro. That's, that's just wild. You're like, bro, this is my belief, yo. You, you, try, you, try, you trying to crucify me? No, Dunn's just sent me an email. Oh, my God, 
they're keeping me updated on a regular basis. I like that. I haven't even done nothing yet. <laughs> Hey, PJ, can I record the meeting? Yeah, go ahead. You look at me, babe, I want to catch on fire. It's buried in my soul. The California gold. You found the light in me that I couldn't find. So when I'm all choked up and I can't find the words Every time we say goodbye, baby, it hurts When the sun goes down and the band won't play I'll always remember us this way Lovers in the night, it's when we don't know how to run, but down we try. But I don't really know you're where I want to go.
What's good, everybody? Hanging out, hanging in there. Heard y'all miss me. Cool. Where you been, man? Where you been? While the ladies are screaming and hollering now and crying. Got Brad here. Brian's here. Sims here. Hello, guys. What's going on, guys? What's up? Uh, no, we've been hanging out. About Washington. Washington was fun. It was one of the best experiences of my life. I love Washington. I love how that shit operates down there. If you don't have a point of contact or an appointment, you ain't going nowhere. Really? And even if you want, even if you want to, like, <coughs> mail something off, you go through security. It's crazy. Everything is security, and you got to have an appointment. Big league dog. It's big league shit up there. It was cool. It was a great experience. But I'm going back down there to expatriate, and then so if you walk your um. When you're okay, so this I'll give you like the overview of what you guys are doing, right? So it's a big picture. You you set up your trust, right? And you got the green card back. Don't send your originals yet. Send certified copies. The bill of exchange and the trust pack has to be an international bill of exchange. Let me show you. And all right, so this is the announcement for today. So whoever wants to sign up, I'm gonna have. I'm going to teach people how to do an international bill of exchange and we're going to donate it to Trump for a million apiece. And I'm going to walk you through the authentication process and everything. So this is your, this is an international, international bill of exchange. Raw though. I didn't stamp it yet. I just signed it and I'm going to go get it certified and notarized at the County. Then I'm going to go down to New York because New York is where we can walk it in and have it apostille. And then I'm gonna take everything down to Washington and I'm gonna be down there for three days. So if you walk all your documents down to Washington, DC, I'll give you guys the, the address and you drop it off. And they got a cool guy down there. So if you get there down there, there's a guy down there that will look over all your paperwork and make sure that you're good to go before you get to the window. And then the lady at the window was very helpful to me too. Like everybody down there helped me out and stuff. They're wicked cool. Everybody's wicked cool down there. But so, I mean, yeah, I'll hold it up. So you got to have, well, I'll go over it in class, like, why you have to have the Unicidual Convention on there twice. You're going to have the International Bills of Exchange on there three times. Good as a veil. Um, we're going to get the draw E and the drawer down. We're going to go over all this stuff and break it all down. And then when you go to Title 46, United States Code, 31, 321, that's going to give us how to authenticate it, how to assign stuff. I'll show you. So that's the only, instead of it being a bill of exchange for your trust, you're going to give the treasury a hundred million. And they're going to make crazy, crazy amounts of dollars on it. And then I'm depositing 11 million into my trust. So this is your overview of everything, right? So you set up your trust, you get your green card back, right? So your trust is open, the accounts are open. Your next things are you open up your estate, your foundation, your foreign grantor trust, your foreign grantor estate, <clears throat> two different 98s, the foreign grantor trust and 98. That's what you're gonna operate. Those four accounts is what you're gonna operate and funnel all your investment money, dividend payouts, all that. And it's all tax exempt foreign. Can't touch that. So you you claimed your trust, you liquidated it. Now you're gonna fund the trust. So where would you deposit a trust at? The DTC, right? So that's your goal. I know it sounds simple and shit, but when you have like uh that's your out view. You you claim your trust, you fund the trust by authenticating your birth certificate. Certificate of Live Birth, Social Security Card, your BC Bond Order, your International Bill of Exchange, uh, Indemnity Bond, your DBA, Certificate of Existence, Standard Form, I'm probably going way too fast, but record, Standard Form 28, um, and then I would do the bonds too. So, uh, I got, I filled out all the bid bonds and payment bonds, the 24, 25. I'll have a class on the bonds. 
No, let me find them. Sorry, my stuff's all over the place. I had it company, half company. Uh, remember what I did with the uh, I'm going to hold a separate DTC class on just the offer and how to get your QCIPs, um, what to do with your defaults, how to buy QCIPs for your default, and then how to deposit all that stuff into your trust account. I'm going to show you how to set up your trust accounts at your, like with Fidelity, Charles Schwab. I'll give you all my paperwork. It's almost complete. Um, let me find the bonds. So I'll go over the bonds real quick with you. So this is part of the offer. And these bonds are part of when you're buying stuff too. Um, I haven't utilized the 14, 14s or the 14, 16s, like the Pat Divine stuff. I haven't used them yet. Um, but for this court stuff and everything else and my Q-sips and shit, I'm using standard form 24, 25, and 25A. Here, I'll give you some sneak peeks, though. You're going to want to write these forms down for your offer. Form 3. There's your form three, and this is going to be a list of. I mean, I haven't filled. I got to fill the rest out. It's halfway filled out. The rest of, I got to put on there is the standard form twenty-eight, and um, my international bill of exchange. So two more on there. Okay. Here's the second page, the form three. That's how I sign my stuff now, or have been. Okay, so we'll go over how to fill these bonds out. Here's your affidavit, standard form 28 will go over the affidavit of individual surety. Real simple. Here, I could pull, let me share my screen. I'll pull the form up and go over like that, I guess. You can take So I'm going to go over a brief, like this offer real quick, the bonds, and then, I'll, and then you guys can just ask questions away. Or I'll go over the default or a discharge or a secure. Whatever you guys want me to go over, I'll go over. Because it's 420. Yeah, 420. <laughs> Where's Brent? He should be supplying the whole class. He's on there. He's on there. <laughs> Right, yeah, I was trying to get my smoke on before this started, but you should be smoking late. right now. I'm about to be puffing away. Hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna move my computer to the outside and do there you my go. little tote tote. There you go. Put your feet on the ground. Oops. Hey, John K. Over there, lit up. <laughs> <laughs> All day. All day long. I see you, fam. That's cool. Okay, so we'll start uh, here. Started making my taco meat for today. <laughs> oh, snap. That's what's going on. You need to go poop. What kind of tacos you over there eating? Um, I just made some beef tacos. Got some asada meat marinating right now in a nice little rub. Yeah, so my boys that uh, they sell the vape store, they sell these batteries. And uh, here's the oils. And it's just... It's one size fits all, so it adjusted. Oh. It's cool. But hey, you could be, you know, you could be in church. You, you could be. In, I mean, you could be at the mosque and just. <laughs> <sighs> no you guys are bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fooling around. All right, so everybody can see my screen, right? It's shared. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So, real quick, your state. 
obviously. So I'll fill it out like I filled it out on mine. New York. Oneida. So this is the bank name right here. This will be your bank name, that's your corporation. These offers, the issue, because part of the test, they're gonna ask you what kind of issue it is, the corporate issue. Uh, it's up for resale in accordance to, uh, and it's for Safe Harbor Rule 144. And then you have the Form 144A. I'll get into it. So, so this is my, my suite address here. Or your P.O. box. Okay, so your type uh, and duration of your occupation. Before I was putting private banker on here, you're going to put surety forward slash lifetime. Ooh. And again, this is going to be your sweet address. Okay, so then down here, the, the surety broker. Here you go. Box four. Let's see if you guys know United States. One zero zero four. Two zero, sorry. One zero zero four. Oh, that's the zip code. How the hell she write this? All right, it's the DTC address, so it's 55 Water Street. United States. Okay, then, PJ, potential dumb question. Wouldn't then, if the corporation is your all caps, then the employer would not be your branch of the quote unquote Federal Reserve because of how the surety ship works through the DTC? Right. So wouldn't it then be the name and address of the employer would be your bond you're, information on the back corresponding? Well, you're self-employed and, and you're going to be running your business out of your suite. So that's why you do the change of addresses from the vital statistics and the human health and service. Okay. And so, you and you're, so you're running your business. address as the file number anymore. Right. Because you're going to be depositing your trust in the DTC and you're going to be yep. getting a safekeeping receipt. But all your but your headquarters is the suite address. True. I just didn't know if as the corporation was originally issued by the subcorp of the state that is a subcorp of the United States Incorporated and all that crown entity stuff that you would still reference the corporation by the file number as to the home address and the employer as the Federal Reserve Branch. Right. But after you fill out form 966 and liquidate your social and stuff, yeah, you're, there's no more crown to you. No more United States. That, that's nothing. You're completely that's, foreign and you're going to, you're, you're your own government now. Okay. So, okay. So, yep. That, I mean, we've always been foreign too with the office of foreign asset control. I just didn't right. know to tie it back in for the original issue versus we requested liquidation. All right. All right. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Then this is, you don't got to put nothing here. You put N A. Okay, um, seven is going to be your certificate of live birth number. You guys want me to show you how to fill out the FinCEN forms? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah, I was going to say that too. That's fine. Actually, I filled oh. out the 8300 for Brad so you guys can all hit up Brad and bother him for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was my second then, was about the 8300. Uh, no, Thank just, you. I'll I'll, I'll I can also help people with I'll both of those forms. Who is, who is that? Wait a minute. I need the speaker. Oh, this is Mary. I can also help be, people with both of those forms. I got my FinCEN and I just did an 8300 on DHHS. Beautiful, say, beautiful, beautiful. Say your name. John Kennedy. There you That's go. Thank you. Thanks, John. That'd be appreciated. He's the man. Do you need an EIN when you're filling out the 8300 form? 
No, no you need a FinCEN, and I'll show you how to reference it. Oh, I don't know who drew on this, but if you can erase that, that'd be cool. Right. How do you get your uh, fins, the fins number? Fins, that's the DTC, uh, C fins application. The fin sen and the fins are completely different. The fin sen is, it's gonna, okay, when I, I'll go over it when I get there, but the fin sen shows you to be a foreign bank and it's gonna be showing you the original issue of all issues. That's why you're getting a fin sen. But here, let me run through these forms, and we'll go through that. Um, hey, text me your this is email. Text me your email address, and I'll send you a link to the fence package. Thanks, Anil. Yep. Anil, you're doing all that traveling. I'm starting to come up to New York. I'm starting to wonder about. I'm coming, out to, I'm coming out to Pennsylvania next week. Maybe I'll meet you down there then. Let's do it. I'll be there for ten days. What about me? Me in DC. I do that. Yeah? I'll hit you up when I'm on my way up. Okay. Hey, next time I come out, please be available, TJ, man. I'm going to come wherever you at, man. Okay, I'm coming to see you. I'll be out there. Okay, right. number eight. So B is blank. So now we're down to eight. Uh, certificate. You're going to put a certificate of live birth number. Okay, you're going to put optional form 90. 91 and list the bid bond, list the bonds. So standard form 24, 25, and 25A. Okay, nine blank. Sign here. Um, and then right here. Again, just abbreviate. I'm sorry, all you have to put in this one is just the optional form 90 and 91. And then, hey, I'll stop share. Give you guys a little rundown again. There's the rundown of those. And then I'll, you know, down, down here, I'll do the stamp and thumbprint down there. It's, they see it's like, it's hard because it's their official seal. So I might just put it up there because I don't want to override their stuff. All right, bid bond. Blue ink on those forms or red ink? I'm sorry, say that again. Blue ink on those forms for signatures? Um, That's purple. I oh. sign in purple, gold, or red. That's the only thing I sign in. Okay. Okay, bid bond. Let me share here. Do you have those uh, blue water blue line? I gotta turn my volume up. Say that again. What do you need? None? Okay, good. Oh, you cut your joint off? I know, I just said, I was like, what? I was like, why did you cut his joint off? Yeah. Okay. Date bond executed, leave that blank. Okay. Individual. So 
start of live birth number and your state. Principal, all cat. Suite address. So mine's fifty-seven thirty-five. Okay, sureties. Hey, What's up? Yo, you ever put like nine 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 eight like for the zip code? You know how it's like. Okay, so like the extra five. Yeah, uh, I just don't have them on here on the form. So I put like the extra five. It's usually just for your your box number. It's like usually zero 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 six one four zero or something. Um. Um. All right. So then. Again, this is your DTC address. New York, New York. Okay, and then the invitation number. All right, so again, the reason why this is part of your offer for the DTC, okay? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a pack together that they sent me. For, um, I got Tony King's a boss, I guess. I haven't listened to him, and that's he helped Gene, from what I hear from Brian. That's who got Gene his black card. So the DTC read, you see that the company, that's all from Tony King and stuff. I don't know if I mentioned it, but. Um, all right, anyways, certificate of live birth. All right, so I'm going to come down. This is all blank. This is for them to fill out the penal sum, the million, all that. Um, you come down here and you sign. And then, so your name and title down here is your authorized rep. Can please, uh, can everyone just please take a minute and make sure that you're muted out because we're getting feedback? I agree. <laughs> then okay and then so then you just sign it and there's your that's your bid bond for um your offer okay real simple when you see someone and this was shown to me this wasn't i didn't like figure this shit out or read it somewhere it's just don't talk about i'll be a mentor through it You guys can see all that. All right, I'm just confirming both times you're doing the all capitalized version as the corporation, as both the principal and the surety. Right. So when Gene talk when Gene talks about the like the lowercase name, it's not in the system because when you're going to get your loans, it's always your business going forward. It's always your corporation that's gonna go forward. So don't get caught up in don't don't get caught up in all stuff. But yeah, I've been and for this for for everything is all cap right now. Everything. Everything's all cap and your suite. You you're not operating out of your home no more. Your headquarters is your suite address. They can't just send regular mail. Regular mail members, it's frauds and it's frauds and swindles. Title eighteen USC section thirteen forty one. When they send mail to your house, they're trying to fraudulently swindle money out of you. And plus, it's how everybody's a U.S. citizen still, and you're just you're half private, half public. This is there's like there's two sides of the DTC: private side, public side. Brent's got a boy; he's a DTC participant on the public side. You know what I'm saying? So, but we're all coming in private. And you will be tested when you go for your QCIPs and stuff. They're going to tell you that they don't hand out QCIPs for treasury bonds and all that other crazy shit. And from all the reads that I show you, you have to answer them back. Like, I was, I, was, I should have saved it. Maybe I have them. I should start talking mad shit to the lady. 
they gave me three different people and I was going over all the safe harbor codes. I'll go over it with you. I'm going to have a class. I'm a DTC alone, but I'm just going to go show you guys what I've been doing. You guys can ask so me. is it, is it good that I don't get my mail at where I'm staying? I get my mail at the homeless shelter. That's, that's fine. It doesn't matter where you get your mail at, but when you're going to be operating out of, it's going to be your PO box. That's your headquarters. That's your business, your estate. That's they need anybody that wants to contact you. Because when I show people how to buy this stuff, I'll go over the secure transaction, the RV and stuff, and the OFAC. And then, so when you send all this stuff out and you don't get your stuff, then you fill out your Treasury Direct um, 0358 and the 5444. And then that unlocks your TDA. And then there's another form that I've shown these guys that unlocks your Federal Reserve. And then you got to link everything with the master account form. That's what I'm saying. The shit last few weeks has been bananas. And you got to create your own surety company because you're going to be the underwriter and that's where your insurance bonds comes in indemnity bonds comes in and then you're the underwriter and you'll be underwriting me i'm gonna show you these bills of exchange baby so okay uh performance bond let me share the screen here and this is standard form 25. I might have to go back to charging, man. Like a thousand a class, man. <laughs> That's fine, baby. Hey, I'm about to be set up where I can accept them. Money orders too, brother. Here we here, baby. All right. Performance bond. Standard form 25. But yo, in all honesty, if I had to pay 25 to go listen to somebody, I'll go listen to Sean. He knows what he's doing. He gets you that relief if you're working. And he knows how to fill out, like, if you have, a, like, uh, the W-4s and stuff like that. Um, Cody, I'm not, I can't put him There's a few people out there in the group that know how to fill out the Ws. So if you're working, they don't pull no taxes on stuff like that. Anyways, performance bond, standard form 25. Okay, all right, it's, it's, these, these pretty much stay the same. They're the same. So the, the same way that we fill this out, all cap name, suite address, all cap name, 55 Water Street, individual, cert live birth, it's the same thing. So it's the same exact thing. Hey, PJ, quick question. Yep. So, so the, 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 the standard form 25, all of those, that's for like the DTC, but then the 1400 series, would that be kind of tied into the liquidation? No, see, I haven't used those. The only people that I've ever heard ever using them, and I don't even know if the shit works, is Pat Devine. I've never yeah, that, that's, where I, that's where I got it from. That's where I was at. This, this is uh, oh, uh, Anthony and Cali. That's where I got it from, and that's why I was just trying no, to. I feel you. You know what I'm saying? I just never utilized them. But right, I, I got you. I'm down to fill everything out and send them out. That's why another thing I tell people, I'm like, fam, fill this shit out, send it out, like with my boy Middleton. Mm -hmm. uh, I gotta get back to the VA stuff. So you know what, and would be a good thing that we could do is we could maybe help people fill out the standard form 30s, the 1414s for the military, so they can renegotiate their contracts and get whatever the fuck they want out from their accounts or whatever. Exactly. All right. All right. I, I yield. I, I I love you, man, too, by the way. No, no. <laughs> All right, my man. We be text battling. <laughs> That's all it is. I love it, though. I, I got you, bro. All right, bro. Okay. So, yeah, the, the oh, I'm sorry, the performance bond and then your um, payment bond are filled out the same exact way. Here, just let me stop sharing real quick. Well, I'm not sharing. I'm not sharing, right? So, they're filled out the same way. So our thumbprints for the corporate seal, right? Your thumbprint pays for everything. Here, I'll show you guys how to send free mail too. Um, oh, I got it right here. Oh, just finished. Unless, the ones. I have it on here. I'll show it to you after. Okay. 
There, all right, I showed you the bonds. They're the same. For the, dates, same. for the dates that we're putting on these, are we putting on the date that we were doing no, the, the papers? No, the dates are, you leave those blank. Leave them blank. All right. Now you're going to fill out optional form 90. Hey, OP, was that Sean, Sean Haggerty for the W-2, George? Yeah, he knows how to fill the W-4s. He knows how to get – Um, he did some tax return. Brian, what do you know about Brian? Brian's Long night for Brian. I'll ask Brian when he comes back. Sean fills out like the W-4 so they don't pull out the taxes. Cody does something, too. W-4, W-2A. W-2A? W-2? Yes, I'm on 9-7. Okay. Right to where they sent on it. All right, PDF. <clears throat> Come on, man, open. There it goes. Okay, so this is your release of lien on real property. All cat. State forward slash sir live birth number. SSN number. This is blank. And come down here, sir of live birth again. You leave this blank, you leave them blank, and then this is how I sign my name. This is where you sign. Like that. So what if people say that they don't take your signature like that? Because I've got that a couple of times. That's not my signature. That's just your print in that. I'll show you, see? Ask them where their code is to show them where they don't take your signature that way. And you'd be glad to not do it no more. Okay, just, sounds good. I just have it printed out there like that. And then there's my signature. And then there's my seal. I think so. Optional form, I believe 91 now. Release of personal property from escrow. This is an important one for this. So this is where everybody gets stuck. They get their trust set up and then this is how you fund it. And, and as I was teaching these guys, the only remedy you have for discharge is not through bankruptcy. It's an international tort claim. And when I show you guys my international tort and there's a relief sought part, if even if your property got stolen, taxes, levies, and your relief sought part is what you want in your fee schedule, you get everything back. You want your house back, you want this, this, and that, everything. Until you, until you fund your account and you have your legacy card, the only remedy is a tort claim, an international tort, an international court. And I'm going, and that's why I want to go back down to Washington because I was showing these guys the, the courthouse. They sent me shit to help me with when I sent my proof of life out. They sent it back to me, but they sent me how to um, put a claim in. So that's what I mean. They're helping me out. Um,
How can we get the proof of life document? Um, there's a guy in the group named um, Jay. I don't know how to say his last name. If King knows him, he's down in Georgia. We did this foreclosure. He he's the one that he I don't know how much they charge. Um, I can get him in touch with you though. All right. Okay, so again, all cat. Eight. Are you sure? It's 491. Please for us. Is it possible to screen share? We don't know what you're typing or what. Oh, you're my fault. Thank you. Sorry. Good. Okay, so the, um, <clears throat> again, it's the same as the top part. All right, everything stays the same. We we'll get here account number. Same thing. All right, so now this is where it gets important. Security agreement. Indemnity bond. Yeah, I'm just gonna type out. You guys are going to see the secret here. Write this shit down. Yep, that makes sense. So you take your foreign grant of trust and change it to transfer trust. that be the name of the trust or yeah all right. right so your foreign grantor trust sorry so i just wanted to go over those bonds with you guys and just see how they're filled out and then the same thing goes for court i'm about to send them in for a couple of people um hold on i just want to make sure i'm not missing something i'm gonna show you a couple things real quick that i'm filling out now so you're gonna add part of the offer is form 10 then you're going to need your um, registration statement, which is like eight pages that goes with form 10. 
Form 3, Form D, as in dog. Okay. It's in the DTC read, but uh, it says for covenant use only, go across it. That form ten, that form ten is is uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission, right? Yeah. Okay, got it, got it. Because because I I was doing some research and I figured that you should be doing those first. I think prior to doing your bonds into the Treasury Department, or is it vice versa? You're gonna have to. It, you can do it at the same time, but it's all you gotta take control of the trust through your DBA, your trademark. You come through with your security agreement, which gives your security interest, your UCC one that gives you the, the lien interest. And that's when Gene talks about the ag. Gotcha. Lien. So, but gotcha. yeah, you have to, but you're, when you have your FINS number, so what they're making me do is they're making me register with the SEC anyways, because that's what you're going to be getting to. Because you're going to all need a sick number. You're going to look into that. So we'll get to there, though. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you guys the offering. All right, so I'm just run these down real quick. I'm gonna take this off share. Right, hair's all over the place, man. I put conditioner. Big meat, yo. Good luck for last week in uh, holding class down and stuff, fam. I miss you out there. Another person. That's another person I go pay to see. Big meat, big power, private attorney general. He's the real deal. You can look up his cases and shit too. He's got some sauce out there. I love meat. All right, so. Now, when you guys, any, anytime you open up a bank account, anytime you open up a, a bank account, uh, you get you get two hundred and fifty thousand dollars automatically on the private side. So the reason why I don't want to tell you that now is because anybody that has a closed account, you go write a check for two hundred fifty racks to yourself and deposit it. But don't do it because here's why. There's an entry fee to the DTC. It's two hundred and fifty thousand. Um, here's how you do it. So that's, all, that's the unicidal convention. My Fins number. Pay to the order. Can Can you meet Michi? Yeah, can you mute everybody? I'm not. I don't have control of the thing. Hey PJ, can you screen share right now, please? Well, I'm, if I if I talk if I talk, does it go? Oh, forget, I'm sorry, you can't screen share. Right. Yeah, if you keep talking, then it'll keep you at, at the, uh, in the front. All right, so I'll keep talking. I got a lot hot, lot of hot air. So then on top of here is the Fins number, right? You write International Bill of Exchange three times, okay? Um, Sign it. There's the back for special deposit. You know what I mean? I put down here EFT only for discharge of debt. You can put entrance fee to the DTC, but I put EFT. Yo, then, me, um, you just so. <laughs> and then for special deposit, for special purposes, for SESTA-K uses. Redeem in lawful money in accordance to Title 12 USC Section 411. And I listed Title 15 on there. Good as a veil. And then I put the group on there. Morris, you do. Right? Just don't forget about it. Then, then you need 200, you need to have a $250,000 insurance bond. 
And you just make an international bill of exchange, but it, you see, I got it on there twice, and I got IBOB and then private issue. And then the laws down here, public law 7310. <laughs> Legal tender, Title 31, USC Section 5103, UCC 51, uh, UCC 3-104. Um, I did. I just, I just saw, I just saw that. Hey, yo, Pete, yeah. would, would it be possible? Do you, do you have those scanned in to, uh, to like, share? Or? They're not scanned in yet. They're going to get certified and apostille. You'll see it all. Oh. And then, so this is what I'm depositing in my trust. So they asked the Don, they was like, well, how much do you want? You can pick between five to eight million. And I said, give me 11. You know what I'm saying? So boom. Remember, cloud, closed mouths don't get fed on the boulevard, fam. You know what I'm saying? It's your money. It's your life. It's all yours. But I didn't put my fence number up here yet. Hey, PJ. So, see, you need an LEI, you need a LEI number. You, need, you see, the LEI number is your global um, ident entity identifying number. And then once you click active on that bitch, then you're actively trading your birth certificate. And then you can hit them with estate embezzlement, copy, you know what I mean? When you're trading that shit, until you're trading it, the only, like I said, you got copyright infringement, your fee schedule, and then your tort claim. You have to international tort and federal courts claim. You know, federal courts, federal tort claim, or international, international tort claim in the United States Federal Claims Court. Tongue twister, my bad. And, and we can do that before we set our set our trust up. Set our trust up. Yeah, you don't need your trust up set up none. All right. Well, no, actually, I lied to you. You gotta have your you gotta have your shit set up. At least lean on you don't have to, you know what I'm saying? Lean security agreement, UCC one, as long as you have that and your trademark or DBA and your common law copyright. That's what takes control of everything is your common law copyright, your trade, your DBA, security agreement, UCC one. It's the same thing. So when you wanna buy a house, it's the same thing. So you gotta get a paper paper form a hard copy of the 1099A, you 1099A, the meets and bounds, you go to the realtor or the state and you get a bill of sale, accept it for value. You start, every, everything is always started with the conditional acceptance, no matter what. Conditional acceptance, I believe it's UCC 3-501. Conditional acceptance, they're never going to answer you. So their silence is their answer. The silence is their acquiescence, right? Silence of acquiescence is their answer. They're agreeing with you. So, uh, let me see. I'll pull this shit up. Uh, I'm not sure right here. Um, On that form right there, you signed it, House of uh, your last name, and then Executor, right? Right. Okay. So this is um your construct. You, this is an example of a conditional acceptance. But in mine, the only thing that I added in here, um, I think you guys have it from my court cases and stuff, is the negative averment. So where it says commercial affidavit here, I just put the negative averment in there. Federal Rules of Civil Procedure Rule 9, or 9A, it's one of the two. Okay, that's... What, what is this? What form is this? So this is how you discharge that. This is, I'm showing you, I'm walking you through how to buy something, discharge something. You got, this is your administrative process. So we'll say discharge. We'll keep it simple. We'll say if you're not a if you're not in the DTC and you're not trading your BC and you want to discharge your debt and you need relief, then this is you start off with a conditional acceptance. Um, 
Okay, and then just notary certificate of service is basically everything that you're putting in the mail. Um, I'll have Laurel put an example of Omega. My international tour and everything is done. I'm just, I gotta go she get shit certified shit. And they be putting state troopers around me. They follow me. I got them here. I got them there. Fucking so annoying. Is this form on the Mega files? Yeah, all the, yeah, all this is in there. So, all right. So then, boom, conditional acceptance. That's always step one. Boom, 1099A is your you how you acquire it, and you acquire it with either your 98 number or your estate number. That's it. So you 1099A, conditional acceptance, right? Proof of claim, okay? Then you come here after 10 days, default them. Cause Sean told you in front, uh, after they're never gonna ask you. So you could, after 10 days, you completely default them. So then after 10 days, you send these forms out right here. Notice of fault, there, and I'll put, it, I'll put mine up there. I'm just going through it. Notice of fault, notice certificate of service, right? It, it labels it here, step two of uh, two. Now we're going to two of three. Okay. Now they're notice of default and dishonor. Okay. That's the second form you send out, certificate of service. Now you take, this is what ends the game. This is, now you can start putting ag liens on them. This is where you could file UCC1 after you file this. Your certificate of non-response, non-performance. Because everything that you're going to be torting for, it's always going to be non-response, non-performance. They never performed. So if you bought a house, a car, when you transferred, when you signed the paperwork, the promissory note, your deed of trust, etc., and you transferred it to them, you, they didn't perform. They're supposed to transfer it to a remake, and they never performed. So when you go to claim and you claim your securities back, the recoupment that's what you're doing in your international tort with your relief saw is you want all the money that that accrued the q subs to it you want the dividend payout to be transferred to you fiscal form 5511 so then you file this and then you authenticate this you, with the secretary of state you get a postilled and then you send it to virginia and you have it authenticated then you can file lanes ucc1 all that then you petition the federal court and you get a summary judgment. Then once you do that, then you could go into your international tort claim, which looks like this. Uh, wow, they're not letting me pull it up. Hold on, let me see if Laurel sent me. Let me stop sharing for a second. I should have some in my email. So once you have that authenticated, that's all you need to get paid is what you're saying? Okay, so now you, all right, so look. All right, so now you have them in default, right? Authenticate it like you did your birth certificate. Take it to the county. Like you just go to the county, notarize it. Then you take it to the state, have them apostille it. Then you send it to Virginia, DS form 4194. Right. Um. You then said you to, yes, All right, so then this is where you guys need help at. Then you go to qsub.com and you guys going to be you're going to you're going to purchase a qsub for private placement equity. Private then placement. then you sell it. To your, you you bring it to your uh, broker and you sell them. The value is going to be for whatever your release Dude, I hate to be a thorn in your side, but Right there at State Department, they're only going to authenticate a judge's signed judgment, not just the file as to certify summary without recourse. Right. That's why you petition federal court to get your judgment. Oh, so then you're doing a petition. All right. But all right. All right. Because I was going to say, I got the miscellaneous on the back, but mm -hmm. they piggyback that through another bankruptcy case. So I can't even get ex parte. It's kind of funky how they gave me my paperwork with the case number, but it's not a way to actually get the, the judge signing off on anything from okay. a standpoint. Keys are on the, okay, now I hear you. I'm gonna come, I'm visiting you first. As soon as I get my stuff, I'm coming to see you. Yeah, you know, I'm close, cool. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, once I hit Washington, it's a wrap. So the reason why they hand my car out yet is because I didn't fill that one form out and I'm still holding classes. They don't want me holding classes, but I don't care no more. All right. Um, so this is your international tour. This is part of it. This is the rough draft. Like I haven't added my other stuff into it. Can you guys see this? Yeah, we can see that. All right, cool. So it's a registered claim. So I have a registered mail number just for, you know what I mean, set aside. You register everything. You take your common law copyright. I filled out, I got to fill out a new UCC one for the trademark and send it into Washington. Security agreement. Everything is, you want land, uh, security interest first, then your UCC one. That gives you your lien interest. That's how everything, 1099A your land, 1099A the VIN number. Then you do your negative check, negative 1041V, 1096. And then you got to fill out the TI. Right, so then here's the affidavit of obligation. This is part of the letter rogatory stuff in here that we've added pretty much. You know what I'm saying? I know all this stuff looks familiar to you guys. I'll get through it though. Let me get down here. Hey, Petey, uh, in a real world scenario, how would we even know to do all this stuff? I mean, this is just... Um, so I've had a lot of help from from the group. So like just by working with everybody through the group, like Dean, Sean, Brian, Lee, uh, Anil, Brent, everybody has the connections to different people and it's just networking with everybody. I've, you know what I mean? I've been very blessed to where I've had a couple of mentors that gave me big pieces of the puzzle and really helped me out and shit. So I've, I'm helped. It's not like I sat down, studied some shit, figured it all out. I mean, I figured most of it out, but this last few steps with the DTC, they've been really helping me out. This is just shit that I put together and I send it in. You know what I'm saying? I just tell people, put your shit together. Don't pay other people to do it for you. You won't learn that way. The only way I started learning was I put it together, send it in, and they help. They've been helping me. Like when they respond to me, they'll tell me what I'm missing and stuff like that. And that's just how you grow. It's just there's no rushing it. You know what I mean? As long as you're awake to it, and you know this group is a great group. Everybody helps each other out. I'm I'm gonna be able to set up shop now in my city. So I'll be sitting down with an engineer. And we're going to be creating all these imagination buildings. So if like you guys want to come into my city, I'll be holding classes here. I'll get all your paperwork set up. Um, I'm also, I'll be traveling. Like in the, once the winter time comes, yeah, I'm going to be traveling and stuff. I'll come see people still. I'm still going to travel. But I'll be setting up shop here and everybody can just come in here. But we'll be set up and then you can create your international bills of exchange. We won't have no hassles. We'll get everything notarized. Everybody Everybody in my city has helped me out so far. I've had nobody be a dickhead to me, fam. Blessed. Okay. Did you download this off online, or did you make so this? This is from Stop the Pirates blog, um, dot, um, Stop the Pirates blogspot dot com or something. His package was fifty bucks. Changed my life. So everything that pretty much was on there were raw templates of things. And that's another test that they give you. Like you always have a raw template. And because I, I have my situation that I'm dealing with. So you, maybe something that when you're reading from the books that I show people or from YouTube or Gene, um, it, that people, uh, different codes pop out to them. So certain things like it attracts to them and certain things don't. I try to give what I'm going through, how I did it. This is it. And you know what I mean? You don't get invited to go down to Washington and go to the DTC and all this stuff for nothing. So, and I do everything for free right. too. I stop charging people. Yo, and, I got the, uh, I got that stop the pirates package. I'll hand it out to anybody that wants it. I've also yeah, it's in my, it's in my files. It's the mega oh, file. Yeah. So right. when you guys see me pulling up, um, uh, let's see. Right here, the secure creditor one, secure creditor yeah. two, that's all his stuff on there. Yeah. I've also got the sovereign filing solutions package too. So if anybody wants, well, you're that. you're the man. You are the man. Yeah, he's the man. And then, uh, so this is part of um, a writ quo warranto. And so when you're demanding stuff, here's all the codes for it. 
when you're doing a freedom, like if you want their oath and when you do your freedom of information at filings or if you go down to the clerk and they don't give you a hard time and they give you the county bonds, here's the codes that back them all up. And so here's the negative vermin that I was talking about and the relief sought. Here's all my tickets. They're the libelies. See? This is my relief sought. That's a lot. It is. I mean, but my life is worth a lot more too, and they're fucking with it, and that's not to be fucked with. True. So here's the, yeah, this is the relief shot, and then I gave them the case, you know what I mean? My fee schedule will be an exhibit, and I'll scan all this stuff in. I'll scan my offering. Like I said, I'll have the DTC class. There's their opportunity to cure. Keep going down. Here's my schedule A. Like I said, this is just a rough draft. It's almost done though. I think she just has to add in. Oh yeah, see, this is what I got to work on. She wanted me to. Okay. But this is your tort claim. This is the end game. This is your. Re this is where you get all your relief from. This is where my exhibits are going. And that's how you would discharge your debt, get your money back. Um, recoupment. Recoupment is easy as fuck. Um, a ten-year recoupment. You write a, you write write out the letter to the IRS. You tell them, dear, write to the IRS commissioner and Mnuchin. You got to fill out a form here. Uh, I'll share again. Connie shared this with me. This is the correct way to fill out the boss twenty-eight forty-eight. Throw this in there with your pack, UCC file number. Put your social security number with your certificate of live birth number right here. Okay. Hey PJ, uh, do you need do you uh, do you get a calf number when you do this twenty eight forty eight as well? Or is it I don't have a calf number. Oh, Finson. Damn. Let me do the Finson. That's important. Then after uh, that, eighty three hundred. Yeah, right. Gotcha. Thank you. Back on track. Cool. Because I heard if you mark none on that 2848 that they'll issue you a calf number. Really? Yeah. What's the calf number used for? Because I haven't used but one. Basically, yet. basically it gives you authorization to actually talk to the IRS directly about any 1099 forms. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, I just recently I'll found look out into about that, that about a couple of weeks ago. They said if you just put none where it says calf numbers, then they'll issue you out one. Oh, see, they're helping us all over the place. Holy shit. Yeah, exactly. Yes, they <laughs> totally are. I got my letter about the identity theft thing, and I got all the awesome. special numbers for all the here's how you want to start submitting things. Here we come. Yeah, they are totally helping us. It is such Here a we blessing. Here we come. All right. Because remember, it's like you said, PJ, that at the end of the day, the reason why people run into problems is because they're not getting certified and registered properly. Right. You see what I'm saying? I know how to file the shit. Exactly. All right, let me pull this up. Fins I got I got that uh, twenty eight forty eight filed right, and they do they do give you a cap number. Excellent, thank you. What's the next phone we about to pull up here? Finset. So you got to go to uh, Finsen .gov, I believe. I can't. I can't. I can't share the. Well, hold. Yes, I can. Here we go. Let me drop this. Uh, here, I'll stop share so no one. Oh, 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 oh! Message here. Okay, see if you guys see if that link is working for you guys. If it's not, you're SOL. <laughs> <laughs> um, should work. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me today on 420, man. I'm sorry about last week. My parents, they never, my dad turned 59 and they never do anything for the guy. He never wants anything. He's one of those guys. And, it's, you know, so we actually had a brunch kind of thing for him out of the blue. Sorry I had to miss class. But thanks to Big Meech for holding down the, the group or whatever and you guys got together and stuff. That was cool. I appreciate it. Uh, is that form working? Can you guys see my screen? 
Yeah, yeah. Let me see your screen. No, yeah, no I can see it. Though. Where's the link? Yeah, I would say there's no link. I put it in the group. The group in what group? I put it in the chat. Isn't you that might, there? You oh. might have did a private. Fucked up. Hold on. You just saw it. I'm sorry. Yep, that's how it works. And and then my other question is is that I didn't I'm not able to click the link because I'm on two computers, <laughs> but I did get to the website. So I'm on okay. the home page. So where do I go from the home page? Uh, see, I I have this link and it brings me here. I'm gonna pull it up. Uh, the link is in the. Okay, awesome. Oh, the okay, link is in the so chat. Okay. Oh, I gotta find this. Oh, we've already got this. Yeah. Second. I could give everybody like two minutes so they can make sure the it loads. Yeah, I'm gonna get this put on a badge. Does this yeah. number ever expire? ID number. I ain't playing. There you go. <laughs> Once you have this number, it never expires. No. Good. This is what sewed it up for me at work. Like all the people that were laughing at me saying that I was making all this up when I showed them the email that I got with the fence in. That was what was the shut up moment. <laughs> Oh, at the IRS when you at John Frank when you were at the Internal Revenue Service. No, I was I was working at I, I have a uh, little job over at a um, health food store, supplement store, organic food and all that. And um, everybody that I work with, when I told them about the trust and what they can do, they're like, "Oh, everybody would be doing it. You're crazy. You're full of it." Da, 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 da. And for the last <laughs> two years, they just been laughing at me. Well, I showed them my FinCEN number and the letter from the uh, Department of Treasury, and they're like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> "Congratulations, my man! Thank Keep you, going. Sir. Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! You guys are making a huge difference in the world. You guys have no idea because all the paperwork you guys are sending out, you guys are teaching everybody. You know what I'm saying? So it's a big spiritual growth from both sides. They've never seen shit like this. You know what I mean? When I was first coming out, I was so nervous, but they really don't know this shit. Most of them." Yeah, everybody that we've come in contact with, they've said, oh, I haven't seen anything like this in 20 years. It's, yeah, it's just like, two yeah, things. Either they deny like they've never seen it, or they just really yeah. never seen shit, you know? Oh. All right. Okay, so this is the FinCEN. This is your number that you'll receive. It's free. Um, it takes up to, I think, you know, 48 hours, 72 hours to come in. Um... Okay, I'm having trouble getting to it because it's All on right, so the let me computer see. I'm doing this video on. <laughs> it's recorded, so remember you can always go you back. You can't click on you can't click on uh, um what's your email? Click on the chat. Can you just click on the chat? That's how I got in. If that's what I'm saying, if I click on it from here, then it's gonna shut this whole video down and I'm gonna have to restart everything up because the computer's going too slow. And, and I typed the whole entire thing, but it brought me to a whole different page than what you're looking at. Open up another browser. Use Microsoft Internet Explorer. Don't use Safari or don't use Google. I'm on a whole different other computer. That's what I'm saying. To type What's everything, your... I can't use the computer I'm doing the Zoom this, meeting on. This is recorded, so you can go back and look at the link later. Yeah, remember that. So this way we don't lose time. If you have Chrome, use EI. It's two different separate browsers. That's all right. Um, just text me. I'll help you fill this form out. Okay. Okay, so use your Proton email. Did, did you subscribe to Proton or you did the free? Uh, I did the, the free account.
all lowercase. Click on start F bar. Pay attention to this one. Oh. All lowercase. Your state. And then your certificate library. So okay, so if this report is being filed late, select a reason for filing late. This is what I'm this is what I'm talking about, fam. When I say somebody be showing me this shit, I didn't come up with this shit. Down here at twelve thirty one, it's gonna be twenty nineteen. Type of filer, individual, SSN number. Come down here, SSN forward slash I ten. Nothing for four. And you put your date of birth. April, June. All cat. First name, first and middle, or er, sorry. All right, just to clarify, that entity's birth date, is that going to be the registration date or the same as the agent for the agency, the quote unquote born date? The born date. Leave not, you don't gotta do AA, leave not A. Agent Rich. I figured out how to do it from the home page. Awesome. Hey, you pick the United States, then your state that you were born in. This is all where you were born has to do with your birth certificate. Okay. So wherever you were born, so this is gonna be, does the filer have financial interest in 25 or more financial accounts? Yes, 25. No. Okay, then you, nothing else to fill out. Nothing, nothing, no thing. Okay, nothing, none of this gets filled out. Okay, and you come back up here, you'll hit sign form, and then you hit submit. And that's it. Go back to the big white box again. What, my white forehead, what? Uh, <laughs> I, am, I am the source value of all original issues, that's it. Yes, sir. We are the original deposit. Yeah, Lamont Jones over here. Is there a certain time when this should be filled out? 
and done or can this be done at any time? Um, this is for more when you're ready to go to the DTC. I mean, no, you need it. I mean, I just see like for time periods or when you need it, just get it done as soon as possible. Like if you learn about it, get it. <laughs> it's like one of those things, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Cause what this is doing is it's you're the private showing you as a foreign bank. Okay. This number shows you as a foreign bank and you're the original it says right here. I am the source value of all original issues. So it shows you to be the original issuer. Okay, I was just making sure I'm trying to do everything in order. That's why. I'm going to have a class and I'm going to put this in order. That's going to be the eight hour class, six hours. That's going to, if you want to hang out, if you're a newbie, that's going to be like 95 pages of redemption. It's going to be scripture. You know, I smoke a lot of weed for that one, but they've been asking me to do something like that. So I'm going to do it. Awesome. So you don't necessarily use the foreign trust. As we, with that being the foreign bank, we're not using the foreign trust name or anything like that for this application. Oh, no. Okay. Gotcha. But I think what I'm going to do and see if it works is I'm going to do one for my estate and my 98 number and see if right. they – But I don't know if it'll work because this one down here, mm -hmm. when it asks for the social, I'll see and hope it takes um, – the, like I said, the 82 or the 98. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, it's worth so I'll let you. I mean, you guys can try it too. You don't got to wait for me to do it. I mean, they'll let you know. Just like they let me know. We should. They're like, nah, not this way, but when you're like, all right, we can figure that route. <laughs> That's all this shit is, man. Or even even just like a checklist, like a one through 50 or one, you know what I mean? First. Yeah, no, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it together with you guys. I'm going to, we're going to, I'm going to have like a, a whiteboard. We're going to do step one the journey oh and this is what they do and then we're gonna help everybody else out that will be it and then once i'm out i'll send all you guys money make sure your foundations is up i'll pay off all your houses and then allow you guys to study and then we'll work on building the boys and girls club the entrepreneur centers and shit like that and then whatever your dreams are we'll get it going you know I mean? hey PG, i got a question can i use this with my 98 that's what we were just talking about. We're gonna. I'm gonna fill a form out for my 82 number and my 98 number. I'll try it too as well. Let you know what I come up with. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's not smoking too much weed. Okay. Hey, I got a question. Can you hear me? Uh, yep. Go ahead. Uh, I recently heard that uh, last month that the IRS had came out with a news bulletin about uh, obtaining EIN numbers uh, that you could not that they had stopped being able to issue EIN numbers using another EIN number. What does that mean to you? Did you hear about that? Right, so the only time that you'll use another EIN number is on the SS4 forms. Other than that, you just use your social. So, but I haven't heard anything on it. Like, so it it is, it is, it that shit don't apply to us at all, so. Okay. Okay. I got, I got another question before you start back up. Where is that? Is the uh, the Treasury Bank in in Puerto Rico? Is that still open? Yep. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, everything's open. All right. Commerce is still going. No. Back back to the last question. What they were just trying to do is it, it what the IRS is. They're just trying to. It's more of a protection for people that are trying to do like money laundering and stuff like that in the other accounts. So what they're just saying is that they need a responsible party on that form now. But I've been able to get a nine eight even given the social on that SS four form. Word, because I have my eighty two on the SS fours. Exactly. So I wouldn't stress it. You're in good hands. Yeah. You're in good hands. Just keep going. That doesn't. It wouldn't apply to you. Sweet. Did you want to tackle that 8300? Yep. Yeah. PJ, a quick yes, change over. Uh, could, you, could you show uh, box 14B again real quick? It's no. Gone. All right, well, miss it, miss it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the answer, 14B. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the FinCEN, it's no. You check off no. All right. Okay. All right, so the 8,300. 
So what I did, I checked off B in accordance to the instructions. When you come down here, um, come on, and, come on. and that basically allows you to go back in time, right? Yeah. Peace. Because you've never filed one before. If you filed one before, it would be, then you would check off the amended. Where is it? Okay. So here too, voluntary report, suspicious transaction, check box 1B. You may also telephone your local IRS criminal investigation division or call the FinCEN financial institution hotline at 1-866-556-3974. So that's why I, um, I started reading the voluntary or the suspicious transaction. So you go up here, boom, suspicious transaction. I wish Brad was here. Uh, does, how about I fill someone else's out for them? You want me to fill out yours or uh, Mary's? You want me to fill out yours? You can do mine. Okay. I let you do mine. Okay. Do you want to share your screen and fill the form out? I'll just tell you the information. I don't have a problem with it. Okay. All right, so suspicious transaction. Now, part one, it says identity of the individual from whom the cash was received. This is you, okay? So this is your all cat name. C-O-T-T-O-N. First name, Marcella, M-A-R-C-E-L-L-A. -L -L -A. Middle. Vet, Y-V-E-T-T-E. Okay, so on here, I would handwrite this. This is what I do. So you put your social here, you don't gotta put, you don't gotta say your social. So your okay. social goes here and your FinCEN next to it. So you do social security number and then FinCEN number. You have your PO box? Um, I just have the 1321 North C Street. Sacramento, California, 95811. Hey, PJ, are you putting the social security number and FinCEN in that same taxpayer identification box? Yeah, right here. Yeah. So I would like write my, I would put SSN and then write my social security number, no dashes. And then I put the fin, the FinCEN like over here, you know what I mean, underneath it. You know, date of birth? 6 19, 1996. Oh, you young. Yep. <laughs> That's good. Glad you learned this shit young. That's amazing. Uh, let's see. What was the? I'm sorry. I don't know why it's not moving over. 16? 19th. 19th. 19, 9, 9, 6. Okay, so here, you, your occupation, your profession. Private banker, Title 31, USC Section 5312. Private banker. Title. Title 31, USC Section 5312. USC. Okay, so. Right here, um, 
what are you trying to, what do you want to, what do you, what are you reporting? Are you trying to discharge a mortgage? Um, well, I don't have a, I don't have a, a house yet. I had had a car. Really, I have a bunch of court cases I'm dealing with that I'm trying to not have to deal with them. All right. You come up with, you put something in there. All right. So then, all right. So say you had a mortgage. This is where your loan, no, loan file number goes. And then, of course. Um, file number. So this is it's, uh, these two are the same. Your loan number, the file number. So you would put promissory note or deed of trust number, whatever you handed over to the bank. It was a promissory note. Marcella, you have credit cards. You can do. There you go, credit cards. Well, there you go. There's credit cards. That's my mom, by the way. What's up, my dukes? I wasn't hitting on your daughter in any way, fan, shape, or form. Oh, I wasn't tripping off that. It's good. We all grown. <laughs> I'm just fuck with you. Okay, so, uh, so you okay? So your credit card application, you it would be your credit card application number. You call, speak to the underwriter. They probably won't let you speak to the underwriter, but they'll give you somebody that you need the the file number to your application. Okay. okay. Because what the application is, that's your bill of exchange because it has an amount, a date, um, a pay to the order of, and their their underwriter basically gave the fourth one as their signature. So it's an amount, the date, pay to, and a signature. That's the four things that they look for in international bills of exchange. I'll say, and then issued by the all cap name. So. Your all cat name. Okay. Marcella, mute yourself in the middle of while you're talking. Oh yeah, got Rose all in the background. Right. So Part two, if this transaction was conducted on the behalf of more than one person, check here and see the instructions. So unless you had like, if you're married or someone else signed your app of credit or co-signed, they go here. PJ, or if, 15. You have a if you have a co-signer, how does that affect this? They go here. I'm gonna fill it out. Okay, so it's it's literally just you, adding them onto the conversation. Right, but if you don't, then this is your all cap name. Whoever took the loan out and filled it out, and it'd be your social here. Um, and this is where all your DBA information. You should have your DBA, so it'd be your all cap name. Sorry, little Marcellus. Social, and then down here, put your 98 number or your 82. Her name. Question: If you don't have a nine eight or eighty two, could you use a social? You, then you just leave this as uh, an A. Okay. If you don't have one. And so this is just be your address, county, and then same thing as up here, your credit card application. And dude, the NA is not don't have one. It means you're the national associated. Okay, you are the national that's standing over top your SS entity. There you go.
then down here. So you'll write your name out down here, and then you'll say C. Finson number. C. Finson number. And then here you go. So whatever you paid, how much is the credit card for? A couple thousand? It's at five. Uh, 500, I believe, was the last time I checked it. Oh, they build in you. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the, when I first started college, they had, like, this thing where you could get a 1,000, and there, you didn't have, there was no interest on it, and, like, it was only, like, 15 bucks a month. I had a, a Capital I mean, One a college credit, credit card thing. It, it was weird. It was mm -hmm. Okay, so now the date the cash was received is the date you signed it. So whenever you know, what I mean, you you signed it and you transferred it to them. So if it was your mortgage note, it's the day you signed it and transferred it to them. Um, the total amount so it's five hundred. If cash was received in more than one payment, okay. So listen. The only reason to fill out an 8300 form out is if it's for more than 10,000. Tran right. trans so if you want to go ahead and price your autograph at like a million per scribble. So right. That's the whole thing. That application has your autograph on it. So start out with the value of your autograph. It's a million? Like if you already have your um, fee schedule, like whatever, I guess, you know, follow that if it's filed. But yeah, right. we did walk folks through and like, all right, that's cool. Start out with at least a million, you know, call the attention down from the internal revenue folks. How does this apply to uh, electronic signature? What do you mean? How does what apply? Electronic signature and signatures, it's all the same. Okay. I didn't, I wasn't certain. I wanted to make sure. So then just keep your total. You got it, Bo. I did mine for five billion against DHA. Well, well, here's the one thing I do know is like when they put it's, you on the credit. No, nah, they took my son's childhood away from me, so fuck them. Uh, that's I, fine. I, that's I fine. Seen my Look, son in seven years, so fuck them. That, that's fine. We're average at about three and a half billion per birth certificate. Um, the point that um, that when you're on a creditor matrix with a credit card, they tap about three and a half million every year when you're granting them that access. Right. You can easily look to go ahead and just follow their dang rules. Right. So then you come down here and you it's your it's US currency. And it'll be for the amount. Country would be USA. Okay, so down here issuers names, serial numbers and monetary instruments. This is going to be Okay, SSN, and then you're gonna list down here the the your mortgage note, deed of trust, car loan number. Um, for her, it's her application credit card. So then the type of transaction, it's always a gift or donation. But stick to gifts because you guys are you guys know gifts. You might be able to get away with H if you checked on it. Or what I told Brad to put on here. Well, I just can't gift gift sounds better to me because we're dealing with gift and estates trust. Um, so, but you can also put um, quid pro quo, which is value for value, uh, which would be an even barter. That's where your 1099B comes in 
for if you ever I never used the B, but that's the the 1099B when Gene talks about 1099A, B, and C run your banks. 1099A makes your acquisition. 1099B is your you gave them a hundred thousand in return. It should have gave you a hundred thousand credits, etc. So I would do gift or quid pro quo exchange. Value for value. And then down here. This is the company, the credit card company, your mortgage company, whoever you did business with that day. Okay. If you don't have their EIN, try Duns and Bradstreet. Uh, I'm sure these people can help you find the EINs. Um, Or if you have their social, they, they won't have a social to business. So just list their address. Bah, 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 bah. Nature of your business is settlement and peaceful. Through love and light. And then you sign. And there's your form. You don't have to fill none of this shit out. This is only if, like I said, you had a spouse and then she would just fill that shit out. That cosign. Where'd you guys go? I got pie. I see. I can see that. Yo, yo did you times the number for 31? Because it went from million to a billion. No, it's all a million. Oh. Because I didn't know that her account was only... These are you fill this out for transactions over ten grand. You wouldn't add the a value, say a mortgage is five hundred thousand. You wouldn't put five hundred thousand, which is the mortgage note plus the million. No, you're you're stretching. You're reaching for that. Hold on, I'm too excited. So basically, just keep it at a mill. Sorry. Okay. Any questions on the form? So I'll, I'll the, okay. The reason why I wouldn't put the million five hundred is you're going to the DTC. You don't need to be scraping no more. You want your remedy? It's the tort claim that's going to get you the multi millions of dollars. For so for on here, whatever you donated them or gifted it to them, leave it at that quick, why would we sign this um, since this should have been something they should have filled out? Shouldn't we leave that that signature line open since it was their responsibility to sign it or to fill thank this you, out? Thank you for answering that, for asking that. So before you fill this out, you have to send them a letter through a notary, certificate of service, return receipt, certified mail to file this form for you. Once and then you wait 10 days and once they don't file it for you, because in the letter you say, hello, sir, dear madam, please file. Here's my FinCEN number. Please file 8300 to show me to report the, 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 the gift that I made you on this date, dot, 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 dot. Um, if you don't file this form within 10 days, I'm going to file it for you. Same thing with the OIDs. Then you, you call the FinCEN number and you call the IRS and you report it, fax it in, and get them on it. Get them on it. Did you say I'm going to go back 10 years for this? Gosh, you keep going. There's no statute of limitation for fraud and embezzlement. Okay, great. Thank you. Right. 
But you can't hit can't hit him with the embezzlement until you're trading your shit your own. That LEI number will get it for you. It's like a hundred bucks. So you only give okay. them ten days to let you know if they've filed the eighty three hundred. Yeah. It's Okay. Uh, okay. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or respond to me at my suite under penalty and perjury of what you're going to be doing. You know what I mean? I got a question for you. Go ahead, Big Meech. Okay. Now, on the bottom of that form in the comment section, okay, there is, if you read that, it tells you to add any information for clarity. Okay. Oh, shit. Now, since our personal data and signatures is considered to be U.S. currency, mm -hmm. okay, wouldn't people be better off putting down that their personal information and data and signatures held a $1 million value? Yeah. Okay. I didn't see this part. Yeah. I just, I just seen the, I filled it out for Brad yesterday. But you can you can also put see attachment, and then right. list your but, exhibits, and then like the all reason, your proof, like a letter rogatory or something. Okay, the reason why I said that is because if you go back over the contract, mm -hmm. there was no value nor consideration given in regards. To right, the, so that's the why they didn't perform because that, when you signed right. everything and gave it to them, they're supposed to give you a safekeeping receipt. So when you when you go deposit your trust at the DTC, they're going to give you a safekeeping receipt. And then you, <clears throat> once everything's linked, see the $250,000 bond, so you can write checks for $250,000 a day. So you can make your donations, write a check, live, that's $90 million a year. The, you sell the the offer that you go to sell everything for is thirty five billion. You get one tenth of the share. Three point five. And one tenth then, of one tenth of a share that was that was created from and, and due to my benefit or, or the consumer's benefit. Right. So all the applications so, you filled out from birth, right. from mom and dad, the okay. certificate of live birth was your application. And now that's all debt creation. That's all debt creation in 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 the no, 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 That's not debt creation. It's working for you because at the end, this is what I'll tell you. And this is so at the end. Okay. Set up think about trust. it though, PJ. Think about uh, just think about this for a second. Just think about this for a second. It is debt creation because the consumer is being held responsible to pay some type of debt off of that contractual agreement. So there was a debt that was created on behalf of the consumer. You're not going to have any debt. That's why you're 250000 every day. Zero is wealth. That's why you always go back to zero. You have to have a zero balance all the time. All right. I'm going to mute out. But I see what you're saying. So, But the offer for the $35 billion, you get a tenth because the corporation is bankrupt. There's no more money. This is your money, which is, okay, I agree with you. It's a debt creation. You're right. If you want to look at it that way, but it's also your assets. And this is how you're going to get your credits to flow. Because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be placing an agriculture lien on your trust. You're, you're going to create a deed of trust. And you're going to put an ag lien on it and you reap the benefits from that cattle. That's what that piece of paper is. It's cattle. And it's going out to work for you, and you get you reap all the dividend benefits. When you do your ag lien, you do it on a UCC one, a new one, or a UCC one addendum. If you already did your secure part per credit process, Secretary of State. I do a new one because I'm doing a new one. It doesn't matter how many you do. Right. If you do the addendum, all you have to do is add the ag lien statute in there if you were going to do it. But I'm redoing it. Um, Gene's video. All you got to do is watch an hour. Where can we get the Agling statute? I'm gonna, in Gene's video, I'm going to show you. Oh, I'll show you. Hold on. I'll show you the website. I'll go through it with you. you National Ag Law. There you go. Uh, As you're searching for that, can I ask another question about that form? Yeah, man. Uh, do you need a power of attorney in addition to that? And do you need to release all signatures, revoke, before completing that form? What form? The 8300? Yes, sir. 
if you're dealing with the mortgage companies, the part of your process when you're discharging, you got to refold power of attorney with them and fire them as the trustee and hire yourself. Gotcha. Question for, the, for everyone else. Okay, oh, so this is can you, can, you, can you repeat that again? That answer? Right. So if you have, when part of re, when you're discharging your mortgage or anything from the bank, you revoke power of attorney from the bank and you fire them as the trustee and you hire yourself. That's you, you do with IRS Form 56. So that's how you would appoint yourself that or do a trustee appointment. So now when you, when you have your trust set up, you'll have trust minutes and you'll record the minutes when you meet with your, you know, your person for your transfers and how long you met for the trust and stuff. That's when you know you're in. So there's this jeans video it goes over. It's an, just, you have to watch like an hour and 10 minutes and then he goes, you know how he goes, he gets off on tangent and shit. Um, so then what's the, what's the website? National Ag Law. Yeah. National Ag Law.org. Of course I didn't put it in right. You sure? My spelling over national. You had it as O R D, not O R G. What I do? Put an O R D, not O R G. I fucked up. I put ORG, right? National Center. Actor Law. Yeah, Center. National, National Ag, Ag Law, Law Center. Center. Oh, National Ag Law Center. Okay. Come on, Brad. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, National Ag Law Center. No. Nah, man, it's ain't it either. Where's my notes? What about the state compilations? It's, it, I need it because it pulls up all the individual state statutes. Brad, look in your history. That's what I'm trying to do.
Oh shit, I'll just put Gene's video on. National, the National Law Center. Huh? Ag, Ag Law Center. National Agriculture. National Ag Law Center. What is it? National Ag Law Center. National. AG LAW uh -huh. Center. Ag Law? Ag Law Center. Agricultural Law Center. So I'm just, we're on it. There you go. There you go. Here, see? Yeah. This is, so you go here. That's it right there. And this is where you'll find your liens. And you watch Gene's video for an hour. He showed you how to film out the UCC one. I think it's, um, what do you say it was? Lean on cattle? Cattle paper? Well, I said you can use any of them. The, any of them that pertain to cattle or goods. Warehouse lien. So if you're in New York, you'd have a warehouse lien because your warehouse, your birth certificate's a warehouse receipt. Bill of lading. <laughs> yeah. Gary's lien, warehouse lien. Tap. Lean for service of stallion. There I am. So, so, so when you're doing your ag lean, you would you would use the code that your birth certificate state is in, yeah? Wherever you're living in. Oh. But for your birth certificate, I'll show you mine. That was weird for New York, though. So. <clears throat> but you have to get a PO box first. And then do a change of address. Watch Gene's video right there. It's the first hour, he goes all over it. How to look up the statutes. The is a, is a uh, link to I'll Gene's video. This is the book, right? You guys gotta read this book. that's what you're going to be you're going to have a mortgage on your deed of trust and all the rents and shit that's owed that's your dividends that all comes to you everything all right so what else do i'm going to go over i'll go over one more thing i gotta go smoke man man you mentioned gsa bonds earlier that's what the standard form 24 25 and 25 a would Okay, I'll go back and review that. And then, unless you're talking about these, Let's see if they let me open them. I'm surprised they let me. They ever released the Bentley in the RV? I, I can't have class no more and show that shit. And then I'm gonna, after I'm done with Washington, it don't matter if they release that shit anyways. Oh, that's the form. That's what I want to show you. The form. Because you you start off, you send out the negative check, then you unblock your TDA, you unblock your, you do your certificate of identity, and then you have to unblock your Federal Reserve account. Oh, so this is where that H and R block comes into play from.
420 feels such like a holiday. <laughs> Just so exciting. Can't wait to go smoke. <laughs> I'm showing everybody everything over here, so my shit's all over the fucking place right now. I have no idea. The report, the <clears throat> for the car, it was like two sheets. I forget the name of the fund. It was the report, the black fund. We just had that. Oh yeah. Two forty four. So this is how you unlock your Federal Reserve and shit like that. Is you gotta report the transactions. So I'll pull the phone up, pull the app up. Is this one of those forms you do after all your status is complete and updated? Yeah. Yeah. So when you have your trust set up and you want to unlock your accounts, you go to buy something. This is how you have to show them that you know what you're doing. So you do your negative accounting, your negative check, 1041, negative check, 1096, OID, A281, all that. Then you got to fill out your TDA, uh, 035A or the 5444 certificate of identity check off the hard unblock for your treasury and then you got to fill this form out so the blocked amount is whatever the car was for so it's a car amount currency type uh, cash date block was your date of purchase would currency type be cash or usd no, I put cash. Everything's cash. They know what cash is. So then you fill out the business name. It's just your all cap name. It's your DBA. One other question as you're doing that. The DBA, would that DBA be in our state or be out of Minnesota? Either or, whatever one you did. Got it. So then... Here's a question for you. Uh -huh. I'm getting blocked at every single bank I go to to try and open up a trust account. I've been to Edward Jones. I've been to three or four different credit unions in my area. Go to ally.com. They do it. You just have to scan in your first page and last page of the trust your certificate of trust and your executor letter and forgiveness letter and they open it up. Oh, beautiful. Game changer. All right, now I'm not stuck on the fins no more. Fucking right. <laughs> All right, United States. New York, come on, man, type, type. All right, anyways, this is New York, and then email, da, da, da. All right, so transfers blocked through the following station program. No, you leave all this blank. Can we uh, ask you to make that like a whole screen? Because we're looking at it as like a small screen, and it's not really legible. To see what What's that, a small screen? My, shit, my screen's not shared? It's sharing, but it's like double screen. So it's in my, it, is it showing? Anybody else see that it's your face and your screen? 
You have to but change that in like, your Windows. Yeah, no, mine is like that too. You just reach on the the left box and you scroll <laughs> over the mouse that makes the one you want to see bigger. So click on that mouse on the the right side of that box, and it'll make uh, it small and his box big. Wonderful, thank you. Also, when you get the recording, go to a big old computer. All right, so the institution that blocked it is the Fed Reserve Bank that you have on the back. Your remitters inf information, this is you. Um, this is your brokerage account. Or you can put your TDA. Can you also use your closed account that you're doing? Because it's been interesting with some of the bounce backs. Remember I was telling you as far as on the school that they were trying to do the deposit instead of the EFT. And so Don't the, keep your, the, the, this, the reason why you want to use the closed account is for the DTC entrance fee. Just that. All right. Well, that's a different, yeah, I know about that part. You know what I mean? Until, yeah. until you're in the DTC, then you can use your closed account checks. That's what that's for. Your intermediary is the treasury. Line. DTC. And then the beneficiary is your brokerage. And you're the beneficiary. It could be your trust under your brokerage or estate or foundation. And then I would say see attached and then show them your whole secure transaction. <laughs> I'm going to go over the secure transaction quick. Yes. Yes, please. Yes, 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 yes. All right. I'll go over quick. All right. The reason why you got to know this is it's part of the DTC um, interview. You got to show them how to that you know how to buy stuff and that you're going to be a bank and that you're going to ledger your books and keep your books balanced at zero. Some people that are coming out and they're trying to discharge it and the IRS might send them a new offer and I'll send it back and they might send them a new offer and you might think it's not working, but they're helping you balance your books and they're testing you to see if you're going to be a one, like a, not a dual minded person. Are you going to do this one day or are you going to do this the other day? If you keep accepting it and you stay in that lane of acceptance, on con you know conditional acceptance upon proof of claim, you're that's where you that's the lane you want to be in. You don't want to be a double-minded person. That's what they're testing for. They want to make sure you're gonna stay in this lane of the path, you know, love and light. So secure transaction. Um, let me grab my stuff. I'll just tell you, I can just walk you through it. All right, so first step one, what do you, what do we buy? A car? Yeah, let's go with the car. Let's go okay. with the car. Okay, so you have your trust set up. You're in my position. You're about to, you're preparing for the DTC. As long as your trust is set up and you're moving forward and you're progressing and you're preparing for the DTC, you can do this. But if you're not preparing for the DTC and getting ready for the DTC, don't begin this process because you want to get, get close, maybe like give yourself 90 days before you start, you know, contacting the DTC and starting this process so you can grow into it. So if you want to begin it, here you go. This is what they did to me. Um, you just, you go down there to the dealership if you want to, um, but this is how bosses do it. You, you call the dealership and you ask them for the window sticker if you want something off the lot and if you're not doing nothing like um, personal. Uh, you, they, they have the VIN number, the amount, the price, whatever. That's, what, that's, that's the contract right there. That's the offer. That's the bill of sale. That's the bill of exchange. That's everything. So you could tell them to send the window sticker to your email. They'll send you the window sticker and that's all you need. And that's all the information you need on the car. Cause you private, they don't need to see nobody. You ghost. 
You know what I'm saying? That's how the, the you operate, fam. You don't see nobody. Leave my keys in the P.O. box, drop it off. <laughs> so you go to the dealership and you say, man, if you want to go down there, man, please have a bill. Of, I just need a bill of sale. I'm going to, you'll get a wire. You'll get a, uh, I need your wire information. My brokerage account will wire you the funds. And if they ask you how long, you just say, I'm going to mail it out tomorrow. They'll be in contact with you. Don't give them any days or tell them three days or, cause I've done it. I've hyped shit up and I'm like, yeah, it should take three days. Da, 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 da. And here I am two years later. So just tell them my bank will be in contact with you or the IRS once I file that 1099A. Nah, I don't say that though. Uh, <laughs> don't uh, just get your bill of sale and then um, boom. So you do your banker's acceptance, then you do your negative check, negative 1041V, there's the Bentley, there's your bill of sale, negative 1041V, you register it, make sure your registered mail number is on there. And you see my 82 number on there. The estate accepts all this. Your estate goes in there and grabs all that shit. And then you put it into your trust. Your 98, your foreign grantor trust, right? Okay, so there's your acceptance. Now here's your negative check. Because once you're in the DTC, you can start. These are the checks I'm gonna be using. Just cutting them. Two hundred fifty thousand here, two hundred fifty thousand there, and that shit better be dancing, right? So your negative check, negative ten forty one V, two negatives make the positive. Then it's no more fifteen days for them to file the OID. It's ten days. Send them the OID letter with it. Tell them that they have 10 days to file the OID. Here's the laws why they found the OID. And now, now you guys are going to have a FinCEN. So you know you the original issue of all issues now. Make sure you have your notary certificate of service. IRS Form 56 for the CFO, appointed them trustee. Uh, get your executor letter, discharge letter ready. Then you 1099A. The last step is 1099A, the car, the VIN number. Oh, oh what says? Nah, this is the check. No, this is a Bentley one. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that goes back to what you used to teach before. That's, that's two 1099As, right? Yeah, because you 1099A, the VIN, and you 1099A, your check. Got it. <coughs> Peter, you said to uh, uh, give them a notice of the OID, and you're sending that to the dealership, correct? Yep, CFO. And then all the originals go to the Social Security Administration Commissioner and the IRS Commissioner, and I would send it to Mnuchin. And then you fill out your um, you get the TDAs. You guys have this done already. And this is the hard unblock. You'll have your FinCEN. And this is what I'm talking about, the hard unblock here. Um, right there this is uh yeah the 5444 is with the hard on black okay and then uh, your certificate of identity so again after i did mine in october they revised this one so there's a new way to fill it out you need to get your tda first because it asks for your treasury account <coughs> number up top on these new forms that's all is and that then, the form 5444 yeah this one was the 03851 the certificate of identity and then this form application to report block funds and this is where you link your dtc like i just went over the mat the federal reserve and dtc and your brokerage account um, PJ, do you have to do this with your 98 number or can you use the 83 or 82 number? No, this has nothing to do with any of that stuff. 
Oh, uh, before that, the step before that on the form, you said blah, blah, blah to the 92. 90. Oh, the 1099A you always acquire with your 82. You had said something about a 98 number just a couple minutes ago, and I was just wondering if you could inverse that with an 83 number as well, or if there's something on this. Yeah. This here. Oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. okay and then uh, 82, 81. So remember, we're still on the first part. We're still in, you know what I mean? We just got the bill of sale, negative check, negative 1041V. We accepted it. Um, now we have to put an agriculture lien on the international bill of exchange because an agriculture lien secures payment or it secures the obligation or the performance of the obligation. So that's why we're putting the ag lien on there. And then we assign it to the treasury, to the treasury. Where's my UCC one? Right here. Laurel's got the examples in the verbiage. Title, remember title 46 USC section 31, 321. And again, contact Laurel because I'm going to have an international bill of exchange class. I'm going to show you how to create them. And we're all going to do a, from a, a, a group standpoint, we're all going to donate a million to the RNC. Not to, I mean, but Trump runs it. So, and then we should be noticed nationally after that one. Um, Uh, hey, PJ, hey, PJ, really quick, what, what are your thoughts on this? I've, I've heard uh, and, and partially witnessed someone who was doing the secure transactions without having to have a lot of the treasury stuff and all of that set up directly. What are your thoughts on that? I'm saying I'm down for anybody that can show it, you know what I'm saying? And if they can, good. But I'm okay. only doing it the way that I was showed how to as I was coming out. That's showing that's. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, but, I, like I mean, this but I, no, I get it, man, because I've heard stories too. Where like, man, you don't need none of this, but they're probably in the DTC or something or something. I don't know. Right. Because when I talked to uh, Mr. Horowitz, he said like back in the early, the late '80s and early '90s, you could just put the acceptance on the on the bill and send it in. Your electric bill was paid. Right. So it's it's just it's just evolving. So then, the eighty two eighty one, you you do the UCC one. The assignment comes from the UCC three. Okay. Uh, ten days goes by. All right, cool. Fill out the OID form. So the uh, my estate was the one that went to go get it. So that's the payer. Okay. The payer's federal is my eighty two number, and then I made the OID. The uh, dealership's going to be the recipient of the funds. Because when they get the wire transfer, because I sent the negative check with the positive amount, so they should send the credit over. They have it. Um, the only, then, then the last step that I might take is I might, once um, I send this out, the application, and I get the okay, the only extra step that I could possibly do is send like a positive check out myself. That's the only thing else that I could think of doing at this point. Because at this point, I know it's just these forms that, to unblock it and then when I'm talking about the master account that's when you link the DTC and you become the bank so this is your name and everything your social security number goes here your all cap name you're not scared. it's 420 ah Do we need to be FDIC chartered to do this? Okay, so FDIC chartered, you have to be a member and what? I'm going to have to, it's going to probably take two weeks, probably two fucking months, but before you get into the DTC, you have to create your own underwriting company. You have to be your own surety service. Nothing hard, but it's a pain in the ass because it's a bunch of pages to fill out. And it has to be filled out correctly or else they send it back or they don't let it in. And you have to be registered with the SEC. So where's the one with the paper clip on it? Yeah. The, the, 
the banker's acceptance in the bill of sale for the car is that yep. you don't have to you don't have to, you're not required to be a member of the FDIC or no, the no 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 they have to be done I'm talking about for when you enter in the DTC so they got me filling out this form here because I was trying to get a FINS number for my 98 trust. And then they, they sent me, they said I had to fill out this lost and stolen securities for them. I'm like, fuck. So I'll fill it out. But I don't know. What, that doesn't make sense to me. I'm going to have to call them tomorrow. But anyways. So Dude, this is no, that makes sense. That's a salvage claim. Your whole, like, lost and abandoned. That's really interesting. As to the transfer, remember you set up a transfer trust? I bet well, you. I wanted my FINS number. Yeah, but if I wonder if there's a power of attorney that was put in there and then transferred, quote unquote, you know, for your beneficial interest. Well, it better be. All I know is I'm gonna go back down to DC and kick some ass. In a good way. No, man, I'm telling you, everybody helped me out, and that shit was cool because I was nervous as shit. <laughs> all right. So I'll go over this next time. So is there all right? Then for the secure, that's the secure transaction. Um, the only thing that I can think otherwise going forward now is creating the international bill of exchange this way. And then you had to do the circular. Uh, that was all it. You had to do was just your all caps. That's it. But you have to have it filled out correctly. Fill that up again. Yeah. I took it down because the refrigerator was not closed. The refrigerator was open. And all the stuff on the When you weigh something on the floor and I just had mop. So uh, I'll show you because I'm gonna. I'm, that's what I'm gonna go do this week. Monday, I'm going down to the county again. Same thing you do with your birth certificate with the bills of exchange. This is another way that they control you coming out, and you guys have to go down. I'll meet you all in DC. You guys are gonna have to expatriate. We love you, Renee. We can hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. And then uh, you're all gonna have to expatriate. You're gonna have, I'll meet you guys down in Washington when you guys are ready and we'll expatriate. And uh, that's if you want to be on like sit on a bank board, you have to you can't be a U.S. citizen. So, I'm so um, okay, me too, bro. I'm gonna be walking everybody on, in the class on how to create international bills of exchange. It's the same way that you do your BC, um, but it's another way that they control it coming out because. You have to authenticate it all the way to Virginia. And then behind your international bill of exchange, you got to put a letter of intent with it and a certificate of existence. Hold on. You guys know about the, the certificate of existence, right? You guys done yours? It should have did it with the Minnesota DBA. I think Laurel charges 50 bucks for, if you want her to do it, she charges $50 to do the DBA and your certificate of existence. Yeah, no, I know. Okay, right here. And then what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to sign down here and stamp. So this is what I'm going to get authenticated. That's part of the DBA. But when you're creating international bills of exchange, you're going to send a copy of that with it. Is that the certificate of existence that Laura did or your own? Uh, Jay did that one for me. Jay taught Laura. Now I didn't do that with my DBA, and I still got it. Is that is that something that I should do to follow up or something? Yeah, follow up with it because I just learned about it too. I had mine done for a while, and then she, um, my man Heckner, Steve Heckner, told me to 
asked me if I authenticated my DBA, and I just I was like, fuck it, I might as well. So I send it Can off. Can you show that again? Just the certificate of existence, please. Yeah. You see it on full screen. Do, 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 do. Thank you. Got it. Yeah. And do you have your bill of acceptance? You mentioned. Yeah, I'm sorry. Your banker's acceptance. For what? Oh, you want to see my banker's ex banker's acceptance on the back of my BCs? Yes. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so I registered them. So what you're seeing up here is the date and the registered mail number and my thumbprint over it. And then it says for special deposit for special purposes, for SESTIK uses, redeeming lawful money, Title 12 USC, Section 411. And then I sign it, buy, I print it, and then sign it. And then it says accepted for value, this presentment, and all related endorsements, front and back in accordance with UCC 3419, Public Law 7310, HJR 192. Please release all funds, fixtures, proceeds, accounts, and order of the court. Oh, release an order of the court to me immediately and exempt from levy. And then I signed it again. Okay. But this time I put Peter Joseph Kalinsky estate. Okay. And then I put my number on there. Deposit to United States Treasury and charge the same to the Peter Joseph Polinsky Transfer Trust, EIN number 98. So you see how I accepted it all through my estate, then my 98. 82 EIN. How do you right. get rid of those? And then, uh, so down here I put more codes, UCC 8-102 and 103. Regulation S, uh, Safe Harbor, Rule 144, Section 3B, and then Securities Exchange Act of 1933 and 1934. And that's how you do acceptance on your BCs. And that's it. That's how I'm going to end it. I should have ended it on 420. That would have been it, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the lower right-hand side, is a, at a seal, a $1 stamp where you signed it? Or is that the $1 stamp or is that $2 stamp? International stamps. Uh, what value? Dollar fifteen. Oh, the moon stamp. Oh, okay. I mean, there's other dollar fifteen. Those are the ones they gave me. They're dollar fifteen or dollar fifty. Fifteen. Your EIN number has an eighty-two instead of an eighty-three. How do you get an eighty-two? Because I have the eighty-three. They're the same. Okay, so it doesn't matter which one you use. Nope, 82 and 83 are both the uh, domestic estate EIN. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Four, seven. All right, guys. Stay persistent. Follow your dreams. Follow your heart. Let love and light guide you. Hotep, Thank I you. love you guys. Yeah. You guys have a great Thank weekend. You, bro. you too, man. Happy 420, you guys. Hello, happy 420, everybody. I'm going to enjoy right, it. Love you, man. See ya. All right, hotel. Peace, y'all.